Hi, this is Prios and I'm a professional gambler. But I'm not so well versed in No Limit Hold'em. But yeah, this will be a video showing some of the biggest hands Phil Galphorn played on No Limit Hold'em. And it will be against opponents like Phil Ivey and Isildo One and many more. But it, uh, expect this to be more entertaining than educational, as I'm not a No Limit Hold'em expert. I also think that Phil is no No, no Limit Hold'em expert. But it would be it's still nice to go back in the day where online poker was still booming and it was easy to make some money. So let's jump into the hands. For the first time on this channel, I'm going to look back at some No Limit Hold'em hands. We're going back to 2014, full tilt poker, 300, 600, that's a 60k buy-in. No Limit Hold'em 6 max. I haven't seen how these hands play out, so uh, let's see what happens. Very interesting. So as we look around the table here, this is a really tough table. Uh, a lot of well-known players who are actually more known for mixed games, but... It doesn't look that tough. I mean, they are tougher opponents, honestly. Nikki Jetlicker is more like a gambler than like a serious <laughs> poker player, at least. Yeah, I, I know it quite certain. Polarizing is Phil Ivy, right? So he's probably also never uh, saw an outs and odds chart and is probably not well versed in the fundamentals. Post flop action, I think, is quite decent, but plays. Is he playing PLO now? I'm not sure. Anyways. Let's see what happens. Should be pretty strong in Nolan and Holden as well. Post-flop action, Alex Kostridsen to my right, to his right, polarizing, that's Phil Ivey. The man, the myth, the legend, to his right, Nikki Jedlica, which is his actual name. Crazy Elior, Elior Scion to his right, and Sam Rostan. I've got a few tables going here. This particular table, this is the lineup, but you will see some other lineups as we get going. I bought in for 30K here. I have 30K. I'm a little surprised by that. I I'm not sure. Phil probably is also not an expert for 50 BB play. So that's probably a terrible decision. Maybe uh, done because he's, like in the last video, scared money or does not have enough bankroll to buy in full. Rarely would play short. It might have been that I was spread pretty thin uh, my account balance this day. But anyways, without further ado, this is every hand where I saw the turn. So I open the button, ace-7 off. Crazy Elior calls in the big blind. Decide to check. Looks standard so far. What to do on the flop? I think the the flop is equally good for both guys. The big blind will defend pri uh, quite wide, and the button will open quite wide, so both can have hands here. Phil is in position. I wouldn't blame if he makes a continuation bet. This flop back, which is not particularly good for my range. I think it's okay. I mean, what are you opening on the button like? 50, 60 percent or something. So you should have some hands. Um, not particularly bad, but um, check seems fine. He bets two thirds. I mean, I think it's probably a fold. It's not the craziest call in the world. It looks like I. Yeah, I also think it's not the craziest call in the world. As uh, is high is sometimes good. I did make the call. So the reason I make this call is I think he's going to have. A lot of potential gut shots to choose from. Any three, any four, obviously, you know. Yeah, after Phil showed weakness, he could also be stabbing with a lot of BS. <laughs> seven, eight, seven, nine, nine, eight. He'll have his flush draws, but, but also, I don't think he's betting a six. I don't think he's betting a five. Put he might not. Six. And then as far as jack X, like if he has a jack, I think oftentimes he'll check to check call. If he has two pair, or better, I think he'll often check to check raise on this jack over card. So I guess I kind of felt he wouldn't have a lot of value and he would have a lot of semi bluffs. So I mean, this call, I'm, I've talked myself into it. I think his logic is not that, not, not necessarily true. I mean, I personally would bet to pair very often because if my opponent checks back, I expect him to pot control or we quite weak and I don't want him to, to get more free cards and I want to extract value if he has something thin where he might check back again. So I I don't necessarily agree with his logic that two pair will check very often to check race. Yeah, so I think it's reasonable to yeah, to um to bet these. It's not solver approved, obviously, as I don't have a no limit hold'em solver. Call in present day. He checks river. Interesting. So it could be that he was making a bet with something like 6-4. It could also be that 
he was bluffing with something like 10-3 and River to 10 and didn't feel like he could value bet anymore. 10-3 will be a quite light defense. Um, it could also be that he's just giving up, assuming Phil has something. And Ace High could be good even. So I will check back because I expect Ace High might be good some of the time. And I don't see much reason to turn it, turn it into a bluff. Um, I'm not going to turn Ace-7 into a bluff here because I do also have those, you know, Queen-3 suiteds and 7-9 of diamonds, things like that to choose from. So just check back. He did have King-9 of diamonds. Hmm. Yeah, I think... Huh. How much sense make his say, check? I mean, he probably could assume that he's very rarely good. I mean, he could... Bill picked up flush draw, but it's weaker than his, but also has no pair. Yeah, I think probably okay. I think he should probably check turn. It's just a little bit too much showdown value to start bluffing with. There you go. Oh, yeah, good, good point by Phil. Uh, Post-flop action raises a small blind. He's probably going to be... Uh, he applies a lot of pressure. Uh, I, I wouldn't say the most pressure on this. We have some aggressive players on this table. Basically him, Phil Ivey, and Nikki Jedlica are all pretty aggressive but. yeah i think it's reasonable to defend that in position blind was blind i defend the big blind with king five offsuit he bets half pot i think it's probably just a fold and call with it agreed the backdoor flush draw <laughs> i decided to raise i have no idea why i was a lot more of a field player back in 2014 and and earlier i also think it's not the worst spot to raise it up because the theory could be Okay, if my opponent does not has, have an ace, it's very hard for him to continue, especially if you also put pressure on on the turn. So, yeah. But if I do these sort of plays, I'd like to have at least a bit of backdoor equity, and he has almost nothing. So I do also don't like it. Uh, I guess I still kind of am a field player, but this is a really, really a field play. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Like... Take a hand like 9-7 suited and raise, or even 9-4 suited and raise with a backdoor flush draw, sure. But king-5, he's just calling all better hands and folding all worse hands. So I don't get this. He calls, he checks the turn. I think I should check this back. It's not the worst bet because everything from the flop gets there. But not having a heart, I don't know. I think it's just a little too ambitious. I think it's okay to follow through as you might have called like an 8 Somehow he might have managed to have a three or he could have like some sort of pocket pair that now has a very hard time. He does call. Now I think I should barrel off. Four is pretty interesting. Oh, that's indeed interesting. I mean, do we get, back in the day, we might even get like ace five, a6, a7, something like that to fold. So, yeah, barreling off. Probably not the worst decision. Yeah, I think having no hearts in my hand, it, it's just hard to raise this flop and not have something. The and the thing is, the opponent also will not have hearts that often as he needed a hand to call a flop raise with. And if it's just a back of flush draw, it's debatable if you would call. Four is unfortunate. Had I rivered, had the river been a three, now I have all the flop two pair, but now actually ace three is too thin to jam. And I'm not raising flop with ace four or eight four or three four. And I may or may not bet the turn with four X. So the four is not a great river. Um, I go either way here. Decided to check and lose two eights. Boom. Barreling off probably would have got it done. Seven. I think probably River Jam would have worked, although it was 2014. People were doing a lot of hero calling. It wasn't so much based on, you know, uh, where we're at in our range. Okay, so I think what was happening, this is a short stack table. It looks like, I think what was happening is a lot of tables were popping up and people were buying in short and then kind of running. Is, is Yudo also is very bad. Six Max is only good at, at ring games. Not sure for No Limit Holden, but I assume it's the same as in PLO. He probably has almost, I mean, not the same range as in heads up, no limit to hold him, but he's certainly to lose, I would assume. Running it up, and one or two players were jumping around. Here we see um, Isildur join the mix. This hand, he he opens with 24 big blinds or 20, I don't know, you know, you know math. Uh, I think it's just to get in with eights. Yeah, reasonable. 
He jams, we call, we probably gonna win the second one. Whoa. Wow, we win we both win against both. Ace King. Quite a good standard, I King, guess. Queen off, so yeah, I like calling. Good stack size by Phil. Calling here, raising would be okay. Agreed. As Litter comes along in a big blind, we whiff the flop, we face a big bet. This is just a fold. It's not the craziest hand to do something with, but you have to be pretty careful. Again. Yeah, I think folding is what you want to do, especially in the sandwich. Against these over half pot bets and three way pots. Looks like I called. Isildur calls as well. Uh, Jack on the turn. Yeah, victory. This is a good. Now he should be done with the hand. Let's see what he does. But yeah, I think he's probably not doing anything crazy. Good lead from Victor just because when he overcalls, first of all, he's raising 4x on the flop. Um, so when he overcalls, he has a lot of jack x. And even though Nikki does as well, and I might as well, I just think Nikki and I are a little bit more likely to have a four than Isildur is. So I don't know. I like his lead. Easy fold for me. Can... Yeah, quite standard hand. Oh, aces. And obviously I have some bluffs, but you know. All right, so if... <laughs> this is a funny one. So this table just started. The small blind is... Did he post it? Sam Rostan, the big blind is Isildur. Post-flop action has posted under the gun. Oh, I guess it didn't just start. What happened? But post-flop action... Maybe limping was a, was a thing back then. I <laughs> don't know. Has posted under the gun. Ah, I think this might also be uh, some issue with the software, but because back in the day, sometimes you just posted blinds even if you don't, didn't want it to. So this could also be the issue here. And Phil Ivey has posted under the gun plus one. <laughs> Uh, and Phil Ivey's going to raise. This is actually kind of tempting to slow play because it's a really funny spot where... If he also thought about slow playing, I think it's okay because yeah, these guys are very weak and Phil also will look weak then and one of these guys might very uh, well do something about that. I mean, Nicky Jacklica is quite an action player. He might decide that... With a squeeze, he now can get all these uh, dead money collected. And Isildur, for sure, also is three betting way too light. So I would love if he just called. Um, post flop action is supposed to be really weak. Ivy's going to be weaker than usual because he's got that dead money in there now. And there's the 600 in the middle dead money. So he might raise a ton here. And so if I just call, I feel like this is the type of table that pounces on that. So I wouldn't mind uh, just calling here with aces. But... Uh, three bet is more standard. Okay, I just called. I like that. I think this is the table to do that at. Like Nikki, Isildur, and post flop action are all the type to make that read. That like if I had a good hand, I would just raise. And this seems a lot more like a like a jack ten suited or nine eight suited for me. Um, so I think this is the table for this play. Any table is a good table to flop an overfull. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, check, definitely, as we have the board crushed is, is, is the way to go and hope that someone does something about it. And yeah, looks like everything is going according to plan as Nikki bets. Phil Ivy checks. So I can obviously bet my hand. I decided to check. I mean, I don't, I don't remember why I decided to check in 2014, but... I think he should check always, yeah, because he looked weak before. Something like 8-6 suited or some stuff. Uh, oh, 8-6 suited actually has something like 9-7 suited, let's say that. That's <laughs> what I'm thinking now <laughs> is Ivy's got a really weak range. And so keep in mind we're multi-tabling and it's hard to keep all these thoughts together. But he might not be thinking that I know his range is super weak. And so when I check back, he might try to rep something later when he's going to have a lot of air that's check folding. Nikki's he's not really checking back. I mean, Nick, Nikki still has... A chance to do something. He's relatively aggressive. I block most of the aces. Um, so I do decide to check. Phil Ivy calls. Interesting. So he's got... Huh. Probably continue to slow play. I mean, I guess what, what should happen? An eight would be bad, but everything else is wane, so... And these guys could both be weak. Arts could be a action killer, though. If yeah, Nick Lee has nothing and Ivy has an ace. Not like a weak ace. I mean, as long as he doesn't fall, it's probably not 
not bad. And it looks quite strong if he raises here. So yeah, I've... how much probably he probably has sex size of these guys. Yeah, also if he raises now, he put Nikki in a very tough spot because Ivy Ivy is still behind him and they are quite deep. They are calling seems to make although if what happens on the turn, let's think about that. Um if he now calls, Nikki will almost certainly shut down if he was bluffing. And he will also not get that much more action from the ace or the flush draw, as this looks quite strong. Yeah, I mean, whatever. I think it's okay, whatever he does. He could just jam it in and try to look like a weak ace or like a flush draw that's trying to fall out. The the ace. Hmm. Very tough. I I wonder what Phil thinks about this one. The weak ace. And Nikki probably has a bluff or an eight. I think I just call. And, just I mean, it, by the time I call, much. I'm saying I have a flush draw or an ace, and and one of us has an ace, so Nikki might start to get a little bit worried, but I don't think so. I think calls the play, and if he has an eight, the money's going in anyways. He checks back, so now basically Nikki had a, a flop bluff or potentially ace-10. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. I mean, probably the action sh will shut down on the turn. So, yeah. Now there's a river coming off, and if it's not in hard, you probably are not doing well. While if you race on the flop, you might get some action, as these guys are also field players and don't necessarily pay attention to outs and odds. And they might even assume if they have like the king high flush over, you might have a, another flush over you, that they dominate or some stuff. So yeah. What I, I mean, this is also you be a bit results oriented. So hard to say what the best line here is. And Ivy has a weak ace usually or potentially a flush draw. This is the the range that I'm putting everybody on. And now I think I need to bet because I don't think Nikki's going to. I think Phil Ivy either has a missed flush draw or a weak ace, and I want to get money from his weak ace. Yeah, I love the sizing. All in it is, I think. That's also what makes most sense if he has like a busted flush draw. I think I should have bet small. I, I like it. I mean, this looks like a bet that's trying to pull out a lot of things. Um, first of all, it gives somebody the option to bluff raise repping the straight or to value raise a straight, not that they're going to fold anyways. But I overcalled flop. It's really tough for me to have a bluffing hand here. So uh, like going big. Yeah, flush rock would do that. I mean, it looks like we both don't really know what to do, <laughs> to be honest. I just think this looks like I have a big hand. I, I, I don't like the jam there. I think, uh, as I said, raising flop could have been the, the, the play. And it's reasonable to do that with a flush draw too, trying to get a weak ace to fold and, and stuff. So flop raise, given the result of the hunt, might be the better play, what I just said. But yeah, it m could have been the same result that both people just fold. So yeah, no, no idea. He probably got the most, and whatever he did, he probably would not getting paid anyways yeah they're both gonna fold so i think that's a mistake i think i was getting greedy uh, but small bets were not as much of a thing back then all right there's raises ivy calls i don't know if this is a call on the big blind but we do call with queen eight i think so i mean it was also just a min raise it's checked around we turn an eight this is a pretty reasonably this is a reasonably good bluffing hand with a dime it's also a reasonably good checking range it feels like i mean it gets better i just had to check and now I think just check and check. Yeah, I hope that he wins that showdown. But yeah, very reasonable that someone has a 10 or something and he gets beaten. But yeah, what can you do? I mean, too, too much showdown value, no need to bluff. And it's not a value bet for sure. Showdown and probably lose, but you never know. Okay. Isidra has jack six suited. I have threes and I'm going to win good. with my eight. Um, that's not an open pre. All right, so Elior raises cut off this hand. Probably just call. Yeah, well played. 
It's also very awkward if he re raises this sex size. Uh, especially from the big blind, from the small blind, I do more three betting. From the big blind, I would have more polarized three betting. Agreed. Betting range. Shout out to Phil Ivey's screen name. Easy check call on this flop. He's going pretty big, which is not as big. Ooh, what's going on. Again, going very big. Ooh, I mean, hmm. not great. But it's a scare card, and people back in the day loved to barrel scare cards. Could have like a single spade or something. Hmm. You block full houses. But I would not do the blocker bluff because the flush probably is not folding anyways. It's a tough one. I wonder what Phil does. I, I don't hate a fold, but I, I also don't hate a call. Much of a thing, and uh, he's going big here. And I don't know. Um, I know that at the time my read on Elior was that he was not very aggressive, and so then I like put. I view this as a little bit scary. Um, he's going to have to have kind of something to keep betting here. I don't think he's the type to just barrel ten ten with a spade. So we need him to have like he's not going to have ten nine offsuit, maybe ten nine offsuit pre. Queen nine off Supri. That's all we can hope for, really. I think for a bluff. Uh, I'm exaggerating, but I think but you have to keep in mind it's 2014. Nobody's that good, um, and I do kind of think that uh, he's going to struggle to find enough bluffs here. So I like the fold. Also, I mean, he bet big on the flop. Makes sense given the reads he had. All right, so this hand I should not be seeing a flop with, but I. Yeah, this is no. It seems not to be not great. <laughs> Sneak on in there with 6-4 suited. Flop a gut shot. Same last hand bat sizzle. What the fuck? He's called? Trying to get paid. <laughs> if he hits the gutter or what? Or what? Seems quite ambitious. Your calls. I mean, I have four clean outs. I'm 10% to hit the turn. I need 20% to call. And I guess I have a little bit in the way of implied odds, so I like calling here. Close. Obviously, I could raise, but I, I prefer the call. And uh, now just oh, fold. Yeah, easy. All right. Plus slump action raises. Ivy calls. Clear call. Um, Mixing in some squeezes. Okay. Could also uh, so I decided to bet. I mean, this is not a good bet. I'm sure I made the read that so this does often happen where the preflop raiser bets a lot of their good hands. This did often happen. It probably does in low stakes games these days. Preflop raiser bets a lot of their good hands. Then when they don't, the second player to act, Phil Ivey in this case, is likely to bet with a hand like sixes to kind of clear up equity and, and take down the pot or, you know, sixes are better basically. And so I think Ivy's often weak. I think uh, post-flop action, uh, Alex is so often weak. And so I go for the stab. I, this it. is not the right hand to choose. Terrible hand. Yeah. Both players call. Agreed. I turn a nine. Continuous. Okay, bet so <laughs> this is a bad turn bet. Um, I guess I felt like it was unlikely that somebody was going to call with. Yeah, I mean, you could, if you follow Phil's logic, you could assume that it's unlikely. So what do I think? that anyone has a jack and the nine now might be the best hand and he could bet for a free showdown and to protect his hand. I mean, I don't hate it, given, the, I mean, assuming that his reads are correct. I think post flop action is check calling with like a five and Ivy has sixes and I'm getting value and protection here. I don't know. It's a bad bet. I should check the turn. I think it's okay. Um, I get one call. I wonder, was I this advanced? Um, I'm, I wonder, no, because I would go a little bigger. Basically, I was going to say, I wonder if I bet a little bigger here, could potentially make post-flop fold a hand like Queen Jack, and then Ivy could either, f like, here. Uh, Queen Jack? Uh, that's tough to get Queen Jack to fold, although, I mean, people folded more back in the day, so maybe. 
So this would be another advantage of this play to get maybe better hands to fold. But yeah, his sizing sucks. He should be a bit, bit bigger. But I don't hate the bet because of the reasons I just explained. Because he has to worry about both of us. And then Ivy... From the... <laughs> Coming from a no limit holding player of ten years back in time, <laughs> or something, maybe even even more than ten years, but that's also the spirit this games uh, are played in. I mean, this is actually from the time, like two thousand eight or something. So yeah, this is I don't hate it as explained. He could call with a hand like Ace Five if he doesn't believe me, or he can call with a King Ten of Spades or something something else that I beat, some kind of draw. So if I bet something like. 10k here i would kind of like well i wouldn't like it still but it would be uh, more reasonable oh i river two pair so he doesn't have queen 10 he doesn't have 10 7 unless they're spades um which i'm already i already lose i would check back i mean if he has a, had a draw he most likely got there and if he has the like jack 10 queen jack type hand he Probably folds now, so I, I think checking is the right play. Spades. So I, I basically only lose to spades and jack eight. It's gonna be very rare. Uh, he will have jack eight suited pretty and play it this way potentially, but I think it's a clear value bet. Okay, sick. Uh, so I go for two thirds. Looks good to me. He calls with the jack ten. Wow, jack ten, really? I mean, Phil bet against two other people on the floor. Did that on the turn as well. Then everything came in. And not everything, but a lot of stuff came in. And still thinks that Jack 10 off might be good. <laughs> Maybe I gave him too much credit for something decent and for folding a hand like this. If he faces three barrels, I would have certainly folded Jack Ten there. Okay, we take down a nice pot. Okay, call the big blind, King Seven offsuit. We flop top pair, easy check call. Nice. Ace on okay. the turn, he checks back. It's hard to make much money here when you call a big bet on King Ten Three Rainbow and the Ace hits. Like there's not much air left, but I could have Jack Nine. I could have Queen Nine. Very hard to have something that's not. Good. I mean, even the gut shots now often have it. Although ace queen probably three bets, ace jack might just call. Uh, jack nine is a bluff. Queen nine is a bluff. Mm, but yeah, must call the flop as well as in first place. Mm -hmm. Very hard to get paid. Also, it's a, I think if you check the most, the result most likely would be check check. And his opponent already showed the tendency to do stupid things with like 10 jack. <laughs> so I, hmm, I think it's okay to bet against him, having seen the hand before. So yeah, value bet is my is what I suggest. I could have three X, it turns it into a bluff. So I kind of like going for a small bet here. I decided to check. Hey Queens. Yeah, probably calling. I mean uh, I think this guy called. Okay. Aces. We're in a three bet. What are stacks here? Yeah, against easy to do, I like it. Here. He could also go crazy with his four bets. Full stacks. We three bet. Isildur is going to put in the four bat. I think this is just a call, especially against him. He's he's very willing. I don't like. It. Mm, interesting one. Mm -hmm. I think it probably does not make that big of a difference if you shove or just call. Like the shove, I think it's a mistake. Don't think so. We do get it in, presumably good. He has ace king. Okay. Too bad for him. I mean, sometimes I mean, if he just calls, he might not get all the money. Flop like this. Sometimes you do jam aces, but I don't know. Unless I had a really strong feeling that he just had it, he's just a great candidate to let 
let barrel off with sea bets. He's he's very into sea betting. All right, me versus Ivy, blind versus blind. I open ten five suited. I think that might not be an open, but that's an okayish flop. Just if he go for a big sea bet on this board, I guess that's not that bad. <clears throat> he calls the big sea bet. Turn nine, I decide to check. Check for it now. What we gonna do? Check raising. <laughs> check raising would be an interesting play. He bets. So, first of all, this is a tough spot. So, my reads on Ivy at the time. He's very aggressive in a spot like this with any pair. So he's betting any pair for protection. Also, in this case, it seems reasonable to check raise. So against turn C bets, he's pretty aggressive here with pairs in terms of like, he'll raise a lot of 9x, he'll raise some semi bluffs, but he'll, I could also see him raising a hand like sixes uh, just to get some protection and make, uh, like put me in a tough spot, make the hand easier to play. And so my options are not great with my hand. I think I probably should have bet, but given that I didn't, I checked. This is pretty awkward because I need almost 30% equity. I'm going to hit a flush you know, 20% of the time. And a 10 might be good. Five could be good. It's rare that I have the best hand, but it's possible. It's just a pretty weird spot. Uh, uh, having the best hand is quite a hard. Hey, he's doing what I suggested, sort of. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't love it. I don't hate it. Let's see what happens. Um, let's see. I decided to raise. So... <coughs> The tough thing about this spot and the reason why Ivy makes all these bets with like king three and pocket fours on the turn is that uh, there's not a lot I can do about it because do I really want to make a big raise like this with kings? Mm. Which then by the time he calls turn and calls river are not going to be in that great shape. And so I feel like I, basically I feel like I don't rep much. I rep a nine. And would I do this with a nine against him? Yes, I think he's a great we we'll also have like deuces and threes. And it's do that against, uh, because I think he'll kind of bet everything on the turn when check two, everything in air quotes, uh, because not literally everything, but I think I'll have a really high betting frequency on the turn. This is 20. Yeah, I think against the high betting frequency, this is a good play. Because you should have quite a lot for full equity. 14 Ivy, I haven't played with him uh, recently at No Limit Hold'em. Um, but then he's not going to believe me uh, here. So he calls as, as I as twenty twenty three Phil expects. Oof, that's a tough one. <laughs> I mean, if he's not believing him with something like pocket fives, he could even consider coming for value. But I think I probably check decide. And I river a 10, and this is actually really interesting because... Yeah, it I, is really interesting, especially if he, thinks that, uh, if he thinks that he's calling light, not believing the turn check race. I wouldn't want to... Well, would I? Maybe against him I do want to start just check raising kings and, and jacks and stuff because I think he'll just call down enough. But Focus, please. anyways, now that I've gotten here, I guess I could check fold, but... It's actually not inconceivable that he would just, you know, would he value channel worse hand? I don't think so. Anyways, check folding feels uncomfortable, uh, but I could check fold. The question is, am I good often enough to value bet? Is he going to call with worse than a 10 often enough for me to value bet? I was thinking about check calling against some ace high flush draw and shit. <laughs> or when Ivy decides that he has to turn, what could he decide to turn into a bluff? Like King Deuce. I think he might. If he has. Yeah. So there are two nines out there. There are one, one deuce, one three. He'll have some pocket pairs over the three as well. He'll have some ace high, ace five even. I guess that by the time he calls a check raise a little. No, he might. Um, anyways, I think it's a jam actually. It looks like that's what I did. Yeah, I think jam is also okay-ish. Giving, given the, given that his uh, reads are correct. Yeah, I like the jam. Obviously, sometimes I'm running into a better hand, but I think I'm often not, and uh, I think he won't believe this very much, so I like it. He actually folded, so I did have the best hand, but he did believe it, or he missed a flush draw as well. 
Yeah, if that's the case, we might have been better off with the check call I was advocating for. Yeah, but they yeah, have no idea. I've very hard to tell what is the correct play there. All right. It seems like our opinions also go widely in different directions very often. Also keep in mind, this, these are complete different games when they are played today. I mean, everyone is now GTO approved. I mean, not me, not Phil, but the guys who are regulars in high stakes, no limit, or even mid stakes, no limit. Nikki opens an early position. I defend the big blind. Fought very well. He checks back. Turned very well as well. Could go either way. I could bet this or check this. He's going to have some under pairs to the jack, although he might bet a lot of those on the flop. But what's he calling a big bet with that's not betting itself? I don't know. I kind of like, in 2014, I think I like a check raise. Yeah, yeah that's There good. we go. Yeah. Fortunately, he folds. But the, re the reason I like a check raise in 2014 is I just... I just think he's going to bet every pair, every two pair hand here, and then a lot of... Nicky also was a very crazy dude. He was cashing in like 5k, then played with very thin bankroll management and run it up to like PLO 100k and made a very small deposit into more than a million and then cashed everything out. So, yeah running hot and yeah i'm not sure how, how well he plays i think back in the day he was okay-ish in yellow but yeah probably did not improve much since then draws and if i make a big bet and he doesn't have two pair of draw he's not going to call so uh you know with a couple exceptions so i go in for the check raise and can get more money that way uh here we three bet ace king offsuit against phil ivy we're three betting in an amount that kind of commits us against his short stack, uh, but not necessarily if others jam. Yeah. He jams, we have an easy call with ace-king. Well done. And we lose to no Jax. Phil Ivy only runs it once, if you didn't know that. Uh, defend he should also run it one only, once only because his side has run it once. <laughs> Is it? Is this true? Yeah, I think it's his side. <laughs> Big blind king-jack offsuit, flop nothing, check-check flop. <clears throat> I don't know why I did this. It just doesn't seem good, <laughs> but I did. Uh, I should probably keep betting if if I bet this turn, but uh, just blocking no draws. But mm. yeah, good to check for a river then. Although you could even consider like calling against all the draws that might not have bet the flop. But yeah, I, I, yeah. Once we check, we probably have to fold. Instead I check. Especially because he said that this guy is not very creative and yeah. Fold. I don't know what that turn bet was. Yep, this the turn bet was thus a very was a mistake in the hand. I would yeah, okay, he opens, gets a call from Isildur. Uh, raise jacks, Isildur calls in the small blind. Easy. Oh, checking back seems reasonable. He check back, I think. That turn also very reasonable. Close on the turn. I kind of like checking back now. Oh. I probably bet. Yeah. All right. Okay. Not that interesting. And the big blind ace five off. Okay. Okay. Easy check down. Easy. Yeah. Check it down and hope to win somehow. Continue to check. Nope. Checks down. Not Sixes, coming. which is. Oh, it's good because the pair got counterfeit. I mean, Sam probably should have uh, bluffed the river then <laughs> because, yeah, he has like the nut low more or less. I mean, it's close to the nut low. He might want to bluff that yeah, on I mean, river. Um, but he was... Not a bad idea to bluff if you have like the, the absolute bottom of your range. Definitely. He, he under bluffed in these games. That's one of his leaks, in my opinion. Ace-8 suited, usually call this. I guess you could three bet. Mm-hmm. True. We're deep. We're 200 big blinds deep. No, 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 Phil. I need to just... Ah, that's... We should just muck it. Fold to, to two-thirds pot with Ace-8 in the back door. So that's a bad call. And uh, mm -hmm. now I wasted some money and I get to fold the turn. Hey. We probably, probably can, can do everything. But they are not very deep. Fives don't play particularly well. 
set mining might not be profitable. So you could, I mean, you could even consider race folding. You could do basically anything with this hand. You would have initiative if you decide to three bet. Uh, playing it this way, you have to fold the flop. Rex. So I call so a raise, get check two. To, to show it down, I yeah. guess. I like the check back. Yeah, check again. Uh, check back once again. Like I'm often with trying not to get counterfeit, like in last hand. Winning against an ace high, or I mean, he wasn't getting counterfeit, but yeah, whatever. Some kind of uh, smaller pocket pair, but he he also has you know jacks, tens, nines. Um, no, this is a terrible bet. I don't like this bet, and because I'm just making. Yeah, I think checking is better play. Making all worse hands fold and better hands call. So now I'm probably going to lose a showdown. Yep, he loses a showdown. <laughs> I mean, he was behind anyways, but yeah, he could have saved some money because it would probably go check, 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 check all the way. Of hearts, well played by him. Ooh. Um, open under the gun with Jack-10 suited. We are... Yeah, deep, definitely. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. This, this is an enormous race, but I think calling is reasonable still. Deep. Uh, 200 big lines deep. I thought we were deeper because my stack is deeper. So I call this hand. I mean, I think you have to call, but he is making it pretty big. It's probably close. It feels very painful to make this call, honestly, but yeah, no idea if it's correct or not. And we are under the gun, under the gun plus one. I think you like have to have Jack-10 suited in your range somewhat, but uh, just for board coverage and stuff this deep, but it's not a thrilling spot. I could also four bet. I mean, you have also board coverage if you have Jacks and tens. So, not sure if this is correct. Of course, but wouldn't do a lot well, of that. Flop. Uh, flop top pair, he bets big. I'm going to call. No, Phil, what are you doing? <laughs> I actually remember this hand. I so, I thought to okay, myself, actually. <laughs> I remember what I thought. I thought, no, oh, I sorry, thought, sorry, sorry. All right, well, this is going to be hard, but yes, checks, but yeah, just call, obviously. Comfortable. But if I check raise, so instead of calling 10K, I check raise to 25K, and then I check the turn. He's going to get scared and check back kings. That's what I thought. Now, would he or would he not? I don't know. Um, but I did raise, and he did call. And with the queen on the turn, I decided to check. He checked back. Maybe it's going according to plan. Hmm. Super no. I think no. It's a great hand to get some value against kings and aces. Or ace queen that peeled the flop for some reason. Ace opponent could be trapping with jacks or queens. Hmm, interesting. But hmm, you would also bet some of the time on the turn. Yeah, I think value betting is reasonable. Putting him exactly on kings or aces. And and the 10 on the river. I don't remember. This also is a dude who is calling all the time, right? With weekends. Or well, not all the time. Saw it once. What he had. I remember what I was thinking, which is funny, but I don't remember what he had here. Um, so Ace King beats me. That's about it. I mean, if he has King 9 or 9 8 of spades. But Ace King, King 9, 9 8 of spades. I don't think he has 10s very often. Yeah, Ace, Ace King also has to peel flop. Although he got. Good odds, so it, it might. Hmm. Often for this line, maybe never, and I block 10. So I guess I have the best hand, so I guess I should just make a big bet and hope that he calls with kings that I scared him into checking back or aces that I scared him into checking yep. back, according to my plan. Like it. But he does fold, so... I mean, he could have had that, but... I wonder what he had. <laughs> I don't know. Um, probably just had ace-jack. I don't know. I have no idea. Pocket nines, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Take it down. My plan worked. Defend the big blind, ace nine offsuit. This is probably quite loose to defend. Although Ivy is loose, but yeah, still seems loose. Uh, against under the gun, min raise from Phil. Was it a min raise? Yeah, then it's okay. Well, Ivy, check, check. We're going to check turn. He's going to bet. I think it's just a fold. No. Like, I have ace high, which beats bluffs, and I have a gut shot, but he's raising under the gun. 
Agreed with the fold. And so the, the number of hands that don't connect with this board, like does he have seven, six of hearts? Maybe. Is he betting it? Maybe. But I, yeah, I just, I just don't beat. He just doesn't have enough hands to choose from as bluffs, I think. So I think that's a terrible call. We fold the river. And that is the last hand. I'm continuing to try to dig up old hands because I know you, you, you have told me you enjoy it so far, especially some of the, the very high stakes stuff, uh, like my terrible session against Isildur, which you should check out. If you yeah, like it, like this one, like, subscribe, share, all the good, good things. If you're watching this on YouTube, consider following me on Twitch as well, where you could ask me things that nobody did this time. Or yeah, Twitter, I always announce when I go online, for example, and also always um, let you know when a new video is out, which you would find out yourself if you have the bell notification on anyways. But yeah, like, subscribe, share, and yeah. Also you haven't consider. yet. Let me know what you'd like to see more. Checking out my second channel, Finance with FX, let's call it. It's about money, cryptocurrency and stuff. And if you play poker, you probably like making money and... That's what we is about. I mean, it's not about making money. It's about investing and crypto. But yeah, it's basically the same thing. Yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching. Good luck at the tables. Bye-bye.